So how much does it cost to hire an editor or proofreader? It probably won't surprise you to find out that it depends. It's very unusual for an editor or proofreader to be able to give you a price straight off the bat without asking you a few more questions. In this video, I'm going to go through these questions to give you a better idea of what to expect when you're talking to an editor or proofreader about cost. The first question you'll need to discuss with your editor is what level of editing you need. While developmental editing, copy editing and proofreading are defined steps in the traditional publishing process, if you're a self-publisher or a company or organisation that is producing content, you may need help to decide exactly what intervention is required. This is particularly true if you're producing work that has been written by lots of different people. For example, different departments contributing to an annual report or different staff members writing blog posts. Your editor will need to ensure that there's a consistency of tone and style across all the documents and that the style guide, if you have one, has been applied to them all. The second thing your editor will want to know is how long your text is. Many editors will use the word count as a starting point in their calculations, while others will be basing it on the number of pages you have. It's very important that you're both clear on what you mean by pages, as this can vary from one editor to a next. For example, it's not unusual to have a page defined as one that has been set up in 12 point times New Roman, double spaced with one inch margins all around. And that's what your editor will use when they assess your writing. Alternatively, another standard that many editors use is to say that a page equals 250 words. Whatever method is used, the important thing is that both you and your editor are clear and understand what is being talked about. Other editors may prefer to quote you a project fee or a day rate. They may well use your word count or page number to decide on that figure, but they will give you one number that covers a defined set of parameters, for example, the maximum length of the text or the number of editing rounds that are included in that figure. The third thing your editor will want to know, what's your schedule? Do you have a fixed deadline? Editors are generally busy people and they can be booked up months in advance with large projects. They may well be able to fit in short projects at short notice, but you can't rely on this. If you're writing a novel, don't wait until you've typed the end before starting to look for an editor. And if you're preparing a company report, don't wait until the week beforehand to decide that you need an editor to whip it into shape. You'll either end up having to pay a rush fee for somebody to get it ready for your deadline, or you'll just take whoever is available and they may not be the best editor for your writing. Don't risk getting a substandard result. If you need work to be completed urgently, or the editor will have to work outside of their normal working hours or at weekends, be prepared to pay a premium of anything between 20% and 200% on top of their standard rate. It pays to be organised. This is where you should bear in mind the maxim, good, fast, cheap, pick any two. Remember, it takes longer to proofread or edit than you think. It didn't take you a couple of hours to write a 20,000 word white paper. So it stands to reason that your editor is not going to be able to turn around a quality job in the same length of time. The next thing an editor is going to ask you is if they can see a sample of your work. They'll either ask for the whole manuscript or a representative sample of it. They need this in order to assess the level of intervention that is needed, whether it's a light proofread or a more interventionist, heavier copy edit. Without assessing this accurately, your editor won't be able to decide how long it's going to take them to complete the work and therefore how much it's going to cost you. It's not unusual for clients to initially ask for a proofread, but once the editor has assessed their writing and discussed it with them, they then decide it's better for a more thorough copy edit. So what will an editor charge? Is there a recommended rate for editing and proofreading? Well, unfortunately, there isn't. 
editors may charge as little as a couple of pounds per thousand words, right up to in excess of a hundred pounds per thousand words. There is no standardised charge. The Society for Editors and Proofreaders in the UK and the Editorial Freelancers Association in the USA both publish suggested minimum rates or the results of surveys of their members to give you an indication of what you can expect to charge. Remember that these are only suggestions and an experienced professional may well charge more, particularly if their work is in a specialised field where their subject knowledge or expertise is in demand. Remember that, as with anything else, you get what you pay for. You don't just pay someone for the time it takes them to do the job. You pay them for their expertise and experience that they bring with them and the value that they give to you. So the last thing you might want to know is when you'll be expected to pay your editor. If you have a one-off job for them, such as the proofreading of a thesis or dissertation, expect to pay in advance. This may be a deposit or the full amount. For a very large job lasting over several months, for example, editing website copy through several iterations, your editor may wish to invoice you on a monthly basis until the job is completed. If your job is small, for example, proofreading a blog post, it may attract a minimum fee. If you know you're going to produce this work on a regular basis, it may well be more cost effective for you to arrange to pay your editor a retainer on a weekly or monthly basis to cover it. I hope this has given you a better idea of how the costs of editing or proofreading are calculated. If you want to read the blog that this video is based on, check out the link in the description and look there also for where else you can contact or connect with me. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more worry-free writing chat. See you soon.